Bonjour, bonjour. Hey, hey. I can't, I can't do that here with the big square. It looks funny. I need, I need more people to, to do my data butlering. While we're waiting, Sam, did you hear most of the call? I heard some when of you it. I was going to make uh, one final statement for Barry, but I'll uh, wait till he gets here. <laughs> yeah, that, that Wikipedia thing is quite fascinating, and it was almost a documentary. Okay, is that everybody? One, two, three, four, five. Was there anybody else that wanted to come into this? Alex will probably come, but I, I was, I didn't stay long enough to yeah. see if he was. Carl, I'm sorry I didn't realize you had an issue that you intended to bring up. I just completely yeah. missed it. No, I, I was actually wanted to kind of be in the white hat mode and stuff, but I'll, I need to take about a five minute break or so. I need to tech, do some tech. Uh, my sister and some other things so i'll be back in about five minutes okay okay carl meantime yeah i've never what white, white hat means and red hat means because i don't know these well, yeah that, that link i'll go find it can you just put it to it there quick or no i'll go find it it um it was his presentation for barn raising and it had to do with the six hats of um sort of system thinking um, okay i'm not familiar with that sorry hadn't heard yeah. of it yeah, red hat, blue hat, white hat, blue hats for the data. Um, I think white hats overall. It's sort of just different perspectives on. Carl, you know. Carl just put it in, and yeah, yeah this is the best um, inter introduction I've seen for the Optima training and stuff that kind of goes through is the scenario of uh, facilitating a meeting using it. Yeah, okay. that's that's the main purpose. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. I'll have to review that later because it's a video. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a, a more nuanced version of uh, Robert's Rules of Order, I guess you could say. Oh, and not that, not that there's any not not that there's any correspondence between Robert and the hats, but a way to organize a meeting. Okay, I think Stacy asked about Robert's Rules yesterday. But yeah, I, no correspondence, and just the hats actually are a way of distinguishing that you are in a different mode of thinking, which is a kind of really. Um, resonates with you yeah. know the idea of having slider you know if you brought up a new slider deck for treble right or in, in sound recording anyway I won't get into all these analogies with but so, there's different nuances that you have to appreciate depending on what the hell's going on right it's sort of like plaintiff prosecutor judge jury and executioner like different roles and what I experienced was that one party wanted to play all the roles <laughs> you know the Yes, one party wants to play all the roles. That sort of ties into what I have to say. Right. That was the I thought. How can you have one person, person, you know, be the judge, the jury, the executioner, you know, the uh, the accuser, the prosecutor? Well, only if you're an agile team of one, right? <laughs> that seemed a little bit uh, sort of an antiquated, anachronistic to my sensibilities, <laughs> but that's the way it was. God kings. God kings and their minions. There is yeah. I, early on, I wrote a big rant piece and right. I was I'm almost embarrassed. I'm getting off no. the call. It was don't it get was off. Fun. Don't get off, Stacy. Carl's coming right back. Carl's coming right back. Here, here's the thing. And I, I really I wanted to like say it nicely, and I didn't know how to go about it. Um there are certain people, like I would not expect somebody to ask me for my opinion on which mapping tool is the best to use, because clearly I don't know. Now they can, they can ask me to try out both and give me my experience. That's one way to engage me, and I think that's a good way to do it. But otherwise, I am not the person that should be speaking on that. So for example, I specifically prompted Doug to point something out, which is not, and I did not take it, Colin, the way you did. I, you know, I'm sure from Barry's perspective, it can feel like your performance is being, you know, critiqued. So I get that for the person sitting in the hot seat, but, but Barry handled it very well. 
You, on the other hand, seem to have been more, I think you related to Barry being in his position. Very much but, so. Wait, right. Okay. Doug was not projecting. Doug was saying something that he saw without judgment, but trying to bring something into awareness. You, however, in my, stop, stop, I'm speaking. There was some belittlement I saw. Speaking. You, however, were projecting. Now you yes. just acknowledged that you related to him emotionally. Mm -hmm. You were projecting. Now, and this is not, I don't mean this to sound insulting, but, and, and, and I'll put, if I wanted another person's opinion, of what I thought was going on inside of somebody emotionally, I probably wouldn't ask Barry and he knows that. And I wouldn't ask you because for me, hold on, I'm still speaking. There's nothing wrong with that. I might ask Sam, you know, what did you think of this? I would ask Doug what he thinks of it because that's an area. And again, it's just my opinion, my judgment, whatever. But that's an opinion that I really want to hear what he has to say, because there's something I might not agree with it. Mm. But that's where I want to start from. I feel that, especially in this past call that went on, after everybody speaks, you sort of give your opinion of what it is they just said. And I don't know how to say this nicely. I know it sounds harsh, but I really don't care sometimes. And that's fine. There's but nothing wrong with you not caring. Alan, I'm not done. Well, go ahead, but you're, 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 you're going out with a bunch of points. It's okay that no, you don't it's care. One point. It's one point Alan, that I'm you're trying interrupting. to make. The point well, I'm, be, I'm, I'm Alan, being you're scolded. Interrupting. I'm being scolded. Alan, you're interrupting. Because I feel manipulated. Alan, you're interrupting. On purpose. Alan, you're interrupting. You're interrupting because because of your interrupting before. That's the point. Can you listen to someone make a statement without interrupting, please? I, I truly wish I knew how to say what I want to say without like making you feel hurt because I'm not trying. No, I'm not hurt. I think Colin, the statement's already been made. Colin, I think it's already been made. Okay, that's you, fine. So make what, the statement well, again. You are interrupting. All right. You're interrupting, Sam. Colin, you are interrupting. Stacy's not done speaking. I might regret this, but since you think the statement's been made, can you put in two sentences what I'm trying to tell you or, or what the message is that I want you to hear? If you can't put it into two sentences, just say I can't and don't do it. You're interested in what Doug had to say, not what Rob um, had to say. That's what you said. So let's talk about that first, if that's okay, what you're not. Of, that, yes. Okay. okay. So in part, that's true. Yes. Instead, instead of giving me 20 scoldings and then to have Sam say, you're interrupting. Okay. I mean, you got half of the message that in that one particular area, I'm not really interested in what you have to say. But I was also observing the faces of other people and I don't think I was alone. And again, I'm, I, my intent is not to hurt anybody or insult anybody, but I feel I'm not, like- I'm not, I'm not hurt. We all have different ways of looking at things. Go ahead, say what you have to say. Let me, let me ask you, do you think that you're a very good judge of what somebody else is going through emotionally when it when it's not something that you directly relate to? Because obviously, if it's something you directly relate to, like how you would feel had you been in Barry's position, of course, you can give a good opinion of that because it's coming from your experience. But would you say that you're very expert on knowing how somebody else might feel? Actually, quite the opposite. Exactly. I, and I agree with you. And that's my point. There's my yes. Well, no, that's not the point. There's an and. Yes, and, right? So I'll agree with you like you like. But the point is, is that I don't think I'm an expert. And that's why I'm being vocal. Now, 
but maybe it's the fact that I don't understand. understand. Maybe it's the fact that I don't understand is what you don't care about. Wrong. I do because I'm asking my questions. Understand. I don't understand why Doug would say to Barry, "What you're looking at is to be a battler," and then you, all you're looking for is the is the big prize at the end. Like I could see, like he's he, in my sense, what he's saying about Barry makes Barry seem quite trivial. I don't think what Barry was doing was tr at all. Okay. Carl's hand is up. Carl, I just, while you're getting on screen, I just want to say one thing. Colin, that question is good. It just didn't belong in that conversation. We could have it at another time. Yeah, that's Carl, fine. And, and I really believe, go, yes, Carl, but I believe that the secret to this, Stacey, and this is the whole point, is that you let the tape play and then we can do a retrospective and pause the tape and say, what the hell was he trying to say right there? And if it's not important, don't bother. So do it or don't do it, but don't pretend you know what happened. Okay, we have Carl to ask start. questions. Warm data. Go ahead, Carl. What hats are we wearing? So I'm just going to describe it. And if I'm not going to get respect, I, I was asked to join this to talk about stuff. So if I'm not going to get respect right now, then I'll drop off. I mean, you two need to talk about this offline as far as I'm concerned. Meet me, me and Colin you're yeah. talking about. Okay, well, let me just- I don't just want to clarify. hear this anymore. No, that's <laughs> absolutely- going to, to talk about what I wanted to talk about. Okay, well, you know, Because I mean, right, so you, me... you invited me. Okay, so let me, maybe I should clarify. I asked for this call because I wanted the opportunity to bring this up with Colin. That's why I asked for this call. I would like to hear the hats, not necessarily, I was, I wanted you to just can be here for this to give any input that you had relating to the call. That was my intention. So I'm sorry if you misunderstood that intention. Would you call that manipulation, Carl? <laughs> Don't go there. Let me talk for five minutes and I'm getting off this call and maybe people will actually look at stuff and then we I don't need to do this next week. It's a longer term thing. People need to watch the video. People need to look at the believing game. And then we can have a conversation. Maybe if it takes three or four weeks, fine. Now, the main thing I was trying to say a year ago was that there's this thing called the believing game, which challenges the scientific method is only being half the picture. It's the doubting game. And then there's this yellow hat and the yellow hat, nobody talks about the believing game, but the yellow hat I think is the believing game. So if we would facilitate a meeting using the six thinking hats, then about talking about the believing game and get some people who are trained six hat facilitators to actually facilitate the meeting. And they, they are, the, they are um, managing the meet, they are facilitating the meeting. And if they, and the, and cause if you had, if you had a trained facilitator, we might, I mean, Doug is to some extent, but you know, I mean, so that's basically the point. So uh, I, let me see, I'll, I'll go ahead and put some, more links in the chat like I was doing earlier. And then if people actually want to engage in a conversation, then we can. Well, thank you, Carl. Carl, where's the blue hat in this picture? I think it's blue, maybe it's gray. Well, I think the big point I missed is that he wants to emphasize the yellow hat of the six hat paradigm and maybe go through it, but it's the, it's the contrast to the science. Yeah, I just want to say, I'm unfamiliar with the six colored hat model. This is all new to me. And when we, he tried to explain it to us in barn raising, everybody just got into a missing the premise and it just oh, went other cultures off. don't like the red, don't like the color red. Who gives a F? You know, that was, they were, I was, it was supposed to be the meeting where I was at least trying to get something. If you look at my Facebook, I've been trying to get the believing game talked about since 2012, maybe another decade. 
it, it'll happen, but. I'm prepared to take it up. I just never heard of it before. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, passion. It's um, Ed, Edward de Bono, who's like developed the lateral thinking. He, yeah. he deconstructed the thinking process saying that we have six modes of, of thinking and he assigned metaphorical hats, giving them colors to differentiate between them. And then he, his premise was that you can facilitate a meeting, but everybody wear, agrees to wear the same hat at the same time and stuff. So red hat, we're take, in fact, if you look at the thing, red hat is the very, is should only get about five minutes. If you wanna actually, but they're different, my take is there are different dynamics and sometimes you need to have, you know, stuff. And that's why I didn't say anything because you and Colin needed to be wearing the red hat today. And I respected that. So I just added a bunch of stuff in the uh, chat to, to um, what, what was getting brought up for me in the conversation. So that's what I, that's what I did today. What is the name of the red hat? Is that the battle hat? That's the, uh, there's some different things. That red is emotion, green is creativity. And so those that. usually kind of pair together. And then you have a yellow hat and. Uh, and red is emotion, hat. green is what again? Creativity. Uh, creativity. Creativity. And then um, the, Black hat, which is basically the only thing we wear, is crit is critical or safe. I mean, there are different things, and it is needed. But the yellow hat and the yellow hat. What I like about the the video I did is it's like it's because it gets into the logical structure and stuff. Now, the other piece of it is is there's um, the um, compendium software, which is open source and hasn't been funded, so you can't run it on a modern machine. What is the yellow? I didn't get the word. Yellow is? Yellow is um, optimism, <coughs> basically. So optimism? It, it's, it's optimism. So, okay. Yeah, so it's kind of the opposite of the... Of the... Um, Critical? Of the black hat. Okay. And then there's the blue hat is facilitation. And the white hat is just like sharing knowledge, unbiased. Just here's the, you know, here's the facts, or whatever. And you don't get into whether that's a fact or not. It's, it's about information. Three, four. And that's six. Okay, unbiased knowledge. Okay, I have I have them written down, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. that video is is amazing. That's kind of the the video from that Optima training is mm -hmm. is like the best concise explanation or introduction I've seen to it. And then I, the other link I put, there's a, um, there was actually a whole journal that was dedicated to the six thinking hats. There's a whole bunch of different things, including one connecting it with Dr. Zeus, I think. So we could take a look at that, have a conversation and then have the kind of meeting I wanted to have. I'd rather, see it happen like in several weeks. I mean, have people look at the, at the, some of the articles, particularly Peter Elbow's um, one, and then, you know, and we can have some side bar short, smaller zooms and then have it be a barn raising probably is the place where it makes the most sense. Or I, or it could potentially be like a Friday um, one since we don't, I don't know what hat we, the Friday stuff with Gertrude um, was kind of. Uh, yeah, that's not experiments, that's mentoring of some sort. Yeah. yeah, I've tried to get the Friday experiments going. I've been doing my own experiments lately, Carl, and I am aligned with your thinking. I'm aligned with Barry's thinking when it, and I call it my brand of craziness is called Fair Conversations. And I think everything you're talking about is the conscious tools to in, in involve yourself into the best or fairest conversation you can have. There's so many different models. Um, you know, 
and and Barry has a lot to offer in this area as well. Oh uh, yeah, I mean that's like Carl is is the blocking issue that this subject was not discussed in Sunny on Blocking. Is that the issue? Because I'm not familiar. I mean, I know about Edward de Bono, but I don't rec recollect this from his uh, book. Yeah, um, yeah, he has several books. He has a, a six. Um, the six thinking hats is one of the yeah. major things, and there's actually a whole facilitation method around it. Okay. And, um, and things. So, what we could have like a small, you know, seminar on this. Uh, or, or just to have some Zoom meetings over the next couple of weeks. Some small. Okay, that's fine because this is new material for me. I'd love to learn about this. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's really <laughs> important stuff. The thing with the Friday experiments is that if you want to involve Sam, he's going to be at a later time zone. So some of what I've been thinking hasn't caught on yet, but to have a several experiments happening during whenever, it doesn't happen, but we, we called them Friday experiments. But, you know, I've been thinking about doing a morning and an evening thing. But if yeah. depending on what you're doing and why, I, you know, you might want to do it twice. I would say record what you do once and then. But again, Right. Do you think there's any value at all at going back and seeing what happened? Like, I think that's a whole different discussion or could uh, it be a use case? If um, other, if people want to go back and look at it, I, I don't know. That's the one that got, um, I think that might be the one that got derailed because it got into a, uh, I, think it was actually, <laughs> I think it was you and, and jazz Al and, I oh, started Jesus. playing the the um, Monty Python argument clinic. Like, oh yeah, yeah. that, that was great. Is, that is, yes, it is. You that haven't was. paid enough money. <laughs> yeah, so it was that. So I think that's the since that was copyrighted Zoom. Like, like yeah. that, I know that took a long time. Uh, Sam's the one who could say how long it took him to. Actually, I was going to search for it. Maybe I'll do that now. Did it ever get uploaded to YouTube? Because there was one that was missing, or two that were missing from August a year ago. Yeah, that might be that might be one of them and stuff. Because as I said, it, it that don't try to record, don't try to re, um, show a recorded um, thing and within a recorded Zoom. I think if you weren't recording the Zoom, it would have been okay, but. It was, okay. you were yeah, I don't believe I attended that session. I think I would have remembered it, but I had no recollection oh, yeah. of that and I couldn't find it on YouTube either. Yeah, it was Heine, Heiner and um, yeah, there was a couple people. Yeah, you were on that too? Josh? No, no, no. I, okay. I, I've just been, no, oh. I, I, don't, I don't remember being on it. I, I was raising my hand to ask Colin. He's streaming to Twitch live right now, I believe. Is that uh, what's not right, on? not right now, but not right um, now. Okay, I can. Here we go. Oh Jesus! Uh, Sam, I just want to be scary. This is it. Is that the Why session Sam looks scary? About? Uh, um, oh, fuck. Uh, unless, unless Sam cleaned it up, don't show it. Did I die? Did I die? Is this it? Is this the? Is this how it happens? Is that Sam? <laughs> I know it's wicked shaman. Oh, Heiner, don't pronounce me dead. Stacy, pronounce me dead. I was just bringing up the if you're streaming to Twitch in the future, if things want to be taken down, you can't. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just that's what I keep trying to say is uh, we got to be careful when we're pressing record. I mean, it, it, publishing is a big deal. We really need to have a good conversation about where, when, we publish and consent so so that we're me, all me, in agreement let me say the f word a hundred thousand times okay i'm done continue on next i'm done too no, <laughs> it's, it's so true so fucking up. true we've had this conversation a hundred times <sighs> yep so definitely i wasn't there josh wasn't there in august a year ago this is unfamiliar territory yeah. As I said, this can be, this is something I, in fact, I don't want to rush it. The fact that was part of the problem is like, oh, mm -hmm. why don't you do this next week? And then people didn't have a chance to look at anything ahead of time. So right. it needs to have lead. This is something that needs lead time. 
Right. And right. you posted a link to a video, which we're not be able to watch while we're in a live Zoom call. That is part of the problem of what getting ready means. Are we yeah, ready to invest? If, you were, if you're not recording, I think you could show it, but we'll do that offline. Just a couple of people who and this stuff, because there's also planning stuff and not and to get to this point, which everybody knows, I sometimes you want to have a meeting that's not recorded to have yeah, some yeah. strategy, something called strategy. So Sam, well, that, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and drop off now. Sam, well, Sam, thanks a lot, Carl. I'm going to paste a couple of links if you want to the video, if you want to hang on and then save the chat. All right. Sam, tell us what is in the YouTube that you just posted the link to. It's Carl's presentation of the six hats. From August a year ago, the one that I've never seen. It's approximately August 22nd of 2020. Okay. August 22nd, yeah. 2020. So that's the Carl's link to the video. All right, I'm sure I've never seen that. If I remember correctly, I, I know I missed that one and I tried to watch it because I think it, it was up. And the point I'm trying to make is I was not able to learn about the six hats from watching it. So that's oh. why I think what Doug said was correct to let Carl start fresh because there was just, again, I, my recollection isn't great, but there was so much argument and other bullshit that I couldn't learn what I wanted to learn. So I don't know if it's worth watching it, at least not for that reason. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't oh, that know. That looks mangled. Say the, whole, the whole session got so derailed that, um, yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think there's much worth to it. The important thing is the links that I've shared now, the, the Optima training, six thinking hats, and then having a conversation about looking at some of that believing game stuff and which article would we even want to read and and talk about and stuff so as i said this is something i'd like to see a con series of conversations um, at least the first one or two not recorded it's just having a planning session for something that would be a formal recorded session and probably mid-october the, the other thing i was thinking carl i don't know what you think of this but i was thinking if you had I don't know, six participants, but in a fishbowl, you know, just to kind of yeah, eliminate. Well, part, of, part of it is I want to have at least one person who is a, is a certified six thinking hats facilitator. I think that's part of what needs, there needs to be a, there needs, that's something that needs to be engaged and be recorded and stuff. But yeah, as I said, planning sessions, uh, this is, there's a, dozens of details that need to be just be talked about, about the best way to present this stuff effectively in a recorded session. And then that would either, I would see that either fitting into something on a Thursday, or maybe it does fit. I mean, if it's of the structures we have now, it does fit into a barn raising, uh, potentially. We were looking at doing some whatever we want to do to look at facilitation methods because this is just one example of a facilitation method right i was going to ask you about that as it's a tool go ahead josh you got your hand up yeah i was just going to say um you know we can practice different methods of meeting and communicating too because with the video is one way we've got the new virtual i'm steeped in the vr ar space so you can meet on um Microsoft meeting teams just to practice having different formats for meetings that might bring out other nuances. And also I noticed uh, Doug's been playing with the Otter AI to have the transcript during the conversation. So maybe we can also start, you know, bringing some new tools into the practice. I just wanted yeah, to bring Zoom, that up and. Um, Zoom, oh. Zoom's transcript that they've got like, they're like licensing some kind of Otter light is actually so otter is yeah zoom, cool zoom bought otter yeah. a while back yeah. so that that's there and i've uh, proposed the clubhouse used to have uh you have to be invited to come onto that platform now it's open to everyone android iphone no invite needed and that's another one to yeah. 
allow other people to enter the conversation. You know, you could put up a, a calendar on Clubhouse and say, we're meeting for the six hats and people that are really interested and can explain it more. I like that platform because it draws in people that are already steeped in the understanding of the six hats. Yeah. And then, and so exactly that's part, I mean, my, that's been what I've been looking at for years and stuff. And so it's like matching the technology with the method. So if we have anybody who can run the, run the um, compendium software with the issue mapping, then that's a whole point. Uh, that's a whole place where you could have, uh, have that too. So there's several pieces to it, but we can talk about that more as a, uh, you know, as. Yeah. And I just want to share with you, Carl, they uh, linked Zoom with Miro, the um, flow charting mapping software. And I do believe that there is some sort of interoperability between the brain where you could export out into a vector-based space like Miro and then link that to Zoom so people could, in real time, collaborate on a whiteboard. Right. Yeah, that's, there's, a whole, there's a whole lot of things. So yeah, as I said, I don't want to take up time with though or what how what people want to do with the, um, the like continuing a conversation uh, yeah well that, that was my question that was my question when you announced that you wanted to uh take you said your piece and you wanted to leave like was that because you wanted to leave because you didn't want to follow the previous conversation or you didn't want to continue the conversation because i think you want to continue on <laughs> If it devolves, yeah. if it devolves back to the previous conversation, then I'm dropping. People really don't like to be asked questions. I find so how you ask somebody a question really matters, and uh, that's you know my biggest hurdle in this group is to decide when I want to become unconfused and how I'm going to do that. <laughs> and so you're so back to your point. Um, you've got a method of it's not really conflict resolution. It's focusing on analyzing, right? But it can mediate conflict resolution perhaps a little bit, but let's not go too far into that idea. Right. It's sort of a process or a tool in that area of meeting facilitation. And so what container you put it into or what tool, what application, so it's not a finished product. So you're saying I could bring a, a facilitator who knows how this works and that would be one container I could put it in in binary scene. Okay, here's the container I find that works. I hear your frustration. I shouldn't say works. I find that it's where I'm pointing to now, knowing that you can't do it in barn raising. Okay, you just can't do it because that's not the way it works. See you later, Josh. You make demos. So you said you've already, you know, produced a lot of information. You got a whole bunch on your website already. And have you ever have you ever demoed a facilitated conversation like? recorded it and showed it and tried to read no, that's know. what I that's that was gonna be one of the proposed next yeah steps, but that's it uh, that's the, it you demoing it the issue was that the op wearing the yellow hat and focusing on optimistic logical conversation is what could diffuse this stuff and we could actually have a productive meeting but um as, as i said that's you know i mean I, well did you see what doug uh said about being interested in seeing what happens but not necessarily being interested in the tool because he's got his own way of doing things so i find that i'm already set up for uh the analogy we had was the uh rowboat in the current and you have to, and this is Barry's analogy, and you have to point the rowboat in a trajectory to take an account for the current or you'll never hit the shore or you'll be, you know, rowing extra and in circles and whatever. And All that's right, the deal. Well, I, I, it sounded like Barry, I'm going to have a meeting probably one-on-one -on -one with Barry and we'll talk about stuff, but I'm tired of you. I mean, just stop you're wearing the black hat and you're derailing the conversation. I don't mean to, I have a question. I have a question. So the question is, is information from you. So in that process where you get into a conversation and that kind of a framework where you know it's not going to work, how do you indicate that it's not working? And that's what I'm saying. If you did your own demo, 
you could control those in the production of the message so that uh, that's why i want to identify a trained facilitator that knows that can wear the blue hat effectively and rein in people when they start going off into the red hat or the black hat and stuff that's great that, but that's what you need you need to have there's a whole certificate there's a whole certification process that the de bono group has and there's a whole group of people i think they're the one people i had talked to years ago were based in iowa but you know it's like following following uh and that's why i said there's multiple steps to this that needs to a uh, whole planning thing to to um set something up where it could be an effective enough meeting to really show the capability and 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 um that could be recorded. I wouldn't want to record another session like last year that completely no. derails because I don't know how to how to. That's that's what would happen. Yeah. Maybe not as bad as before. It's getting better, but so those are two pieces of information that I've been trying to bring from my message because you can't just bring it in to that space and have it unroll without having it pre pre packaged and ready as a demonstration. Right. Number one. That's what, happened, that's what happened last year. It's like I. Yeah. I said I had number two. Oh, why don't you do it next week? And then number two, even look number at the five minute video that I did post, and that I did. thing, you know, um, derailed from there. But I don't, uh, we don't need to rehash it. I don't, no, no, no. But the, the other thing is, if we want to actually give respect to the idea of giving you respect and your idea for the ask that you have, I'm looking at having a simple way in the group to go to a Trello board and say, okay, Carl's going to print, do this. These are the prerequisites if you're interested. And, you know, and then that card could progress, like you say, over five weeks. That's the missing piece in the group. There's right. no continuation. It's all surface level, smoothing the fucking stuff over, and then declaring that people don't understand because there's no nuance. It's just fucking insanity. Right. Yeah. But it's a lot of good people, and I think we do care. And uh, I take what Stacy says to heart. I do, but we're different people, right? Yeah. So, how can we get together with your facilitation method? That would be interesting. Maybe Stacy would be willing to do that because I don't feel I'm standing or trying to block her against her in any way, other than try to hold on to my own rationality. Whatever hat I need to do that, I guess it's black most of the time, right? So that's well, a hard place to be. And everybody varies and stuff. Obviously, your red hat and your red hat and black hat today which yeah. is great sometimes you need to people need to vent that's almost what we were that was almost what we did with gertrude's thing it's like who's yeah. who, who's like yeah the brightest <laughs> yeah well also stacy and i last time got into it a little bit in a positive way about this idea of believing so the whole the idea is the yellow hat that you want to focus on right the believing game yeah. correct and that is the one that is um, the partner to science to get full spectrum of reasoning. You can't get full reasoning with science right. alone. So there's there's a there's an article that that uh, um, Peter Elbow is a professor of English uh, emeritus at Amherst, and uh, and he's and then there's almost an entire journal art. Um, issue that was devoted to it so as i said i'll talk i mean it's having yeah. a conversation it's looking at that link it's like how do we develop a least uh can we come up with like a two pager that people could actually look at that gives them enough to engage in a conversation or something along those lines so yeah as i said i'll follow i'll follow up and uh, we know as i said I, I, something to get on the on the calendar for like mid-October probably. So if I understand, Carl, your position is that the yellow hat, the mediation, is where we have a shortfall. We're not getting good enough mediation uh, mm -hmm. in these conversations. They're going in the directions that you call red hat and black hat and not enough yellow hat mediation. Is that right? Do I have that right? Right, yeah. So yeah, as I said, I haven't I've been I've known about the method for years. I haven't been able to ever experience it. 
So mm. that's been part of the problem. And so yes, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Any method, and I, I think we need a whole series, like Jot, uh, as Jot was starting to say there, I mean, we need a whole, we could almost have a whole track where, where we're saying it's like, hey, there's this whole science called, there's whole art called facilitation and there's mm. all these different methods and maybe we work on having that. So this would be yes. just thinking hats, um, you know, meeting, we could have, a, you know, I mean, there was so many methods out there. So how to have fair conversation conversations, really, yeah, there's and a frame whole, them. There's a whole play. There's a whole crucial conversations uh, environment, too. So as I said, I'll have a conversation offline. Yeah. And, um, you know, yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, way back in January, uh, Stacy and Sam proposed a mediation session and we initiated the session and it went off the rails it, it never yeah, got to mediation. No. It totally went off the rails, red hat, black hat. And so, yes, I have an, a very well-remembered failure of an attempt yeah. to have a mediation session. There's, there's several. I, I think another big point that Carl's saying is we all have to wear the same hat at the same time so that we're not, we're not going cross purposes and that doesn't happen. Exactly. And organizations that have really adopted this, they've cut their meeting times in half. Yeah, get on, get on the same fucking page, would you? <laughs> that, more pay, that more than pays for any, like yeah. having a highly skilled facilitator. <laughs> yeah. So how frustrating is it to try to get have a demonstration about getting on the same page and not being able to get people on the same page? It's like, yeah, it's meta, meta frustrating. Yeah, I call it the law, I, there's a law of gravity and there's a law of irony. That's <laughs> well, I'm glad you've you've calmed down. I hope you feel heard. Um, if you want to do, if you want to get it done right, do it with people who know what it means to prepare. That's all I can tell you, and exactly. and know how to write a list and follow it. That's it. It's finding the right, the right. Because uh, they're not doing that. They're not doing that right now. They're not doing that. I've tried to push Trello in the simplest of terms. What comes back is, oh, but you could do it so much better than Trello. I'm just saying, make a list and follow it, where we can all collaborate. Like, yeah, just 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 have an intention that I can see. Just anything. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks, Carl. Include me if you will. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you, Barry. I don't know if Sam's around. He might have some uh, final thoughts on this because this is his wheelhouse too. I think uh, it's curious that the experiment that I hold as barn raising is. Difficult insane <laughs> insane what was the word sam i didn't hear your word it's difficult to understand okay difficult to so understand. in other words for people to say let's have moderation there needs to be an agreement that we all want that moderation yeah we want that's agreement. why i said make it a friday thing that does of the of the things we have existed, well, i thought i was speaking it Carl. Could be barn raising it would be the one but then uh, as i said i don't Carl, I hear you have a lot of emotion about this, but one of the things that I reflected on when you were uh, sharing your feelings about this was almost everyone comes, presents, and then feels frustrated that they're not heard. Almost everyone, without exception. That is a smart people problem. Now, it is another smart people problem what you do about that. All of us. I doubt, I doubt anybody was totally fucking disrespected by everybody in the meeting that than me. <laughs> that, that, and the one I tried. And as I said, it's and I even said that this doesn't make sense. It need people need to look at it. There needs to be some preparation. It's like, oh, you do it. And then it turned into a total disaster because people couldn't uh, watch a five minute video ahead of time. As I said, I this is something that needs to be um, done. Not going to do it right this time, correctly this time. So next week or week after, are you going to do the five minute video as a as no, a whole? No, I'm going to do that completely offline. It has nothing to do with GCC. It's oh. just going to be to a couple people who want to actually talk about planning. So, uh, on your Facebook page, you're going to do it? Where are you going to do it? I'll probably, I'll host a Zoom meeting. I'll be a Zoom meeting. Okay. Yeah. Just, 
but then it's it's not within the like maybe as i said we'll figure out what what to do as far as uh you know maybe it you know we've never had a facil uh, actually a facilitated meeting that i'm aware of virtual well, came closest to it but highly contained except for, except for the appreciators with yeah the, but that was highly contained yeah. There was rules, baby. There was rules there. Yeah, she, she really well, moderated. There, there, rule, there are rules with there's rules with facilitation method. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Everybody's gonna wear the same mode, gonna be in the same mode of thinking at the same time, or leave if you don't want it contributing to that particular session. That's all there is to it, you know. And and then every method has a process. And if you're not going to respect the integrity of the process, then why are you there? You know. Good question. I'm trying to figure out what the process is is a problem too. Uh, I find when there is no structure, and look at look at Alex, right? Reed, great guy, but he doesn't get it like you get it. That you got to go off and prepare it. And then bring it back and do it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to learn that. I think that's just a natural way to look at what needs to be done. People who come to the group and think that they can just lay it all out on the barn room floor, everybody's going to get it and it's going to take like 20 minutes. They're delusional. Like it, there's got to be a Trello board with a list somewhere if you're working. And I'm saying that's usually offline. I would like people to have that mindset. And I think Sam tries to bring that to the group that, you know, individuals working together bringing things together but not the whole group doing steering the ship at once and and i think that's what defeated you in some way jazz and alex and other people they come with the mindset that this is actually the company no this is this is the town square where people from different companies come and present and sam said many people from many companies that come presented and they leave frustrated that's because nobody prepares or follows through in a, in a way that trello would easily show with just four cards, right? <laughs> right. I I agree with you. So yeah, as I said, we'll we'll um have we'll as I said, I think whatever event we have will be probably mid October. I mean, we probably need sure, sure. To, uh, I've got lots of things I'm working on, but I I really appreciate your yours and Barry too. I put Barry in a category where he actually does produce and puts his effort where he puts his his words. So I think the word for me this month is effort and people who are putting effort forward. And to follow a Trello list takes effort. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Thank you so much. And Stacy might have had something to say. She popped in. I, I hate to feel she's feeling ignored. Please oh, come no, back. I'm Stacey. listening. I'm listening. Yeah. So did we resolve the issues that we had this extension to resolve? No, but that's okay. I think we agree to disagree and, and, and take it off, um, take it. Well, to, well here, here, here's the point. I initiated this call specifically because I had something that I wanted to continue on that was misunderstood by you. Yeah, you, you yelled it. Right after you, I, I bet it, so that's, that, yeah, I mean. So. But you yelled, but do you realize you yelled at me? So when I listened to you talk about being disrespected, and I understood you were heated, so I backed because, off. Because it was a natural thing that you said right after that, that, uh, that you know, it was more than, I think it was more than thing that, that people Why wanted to follow up with mine. You didn't say you wanted to think you had something specific for an agenda. I yeah, thought I kinda you, did. You sensed, you sensed my, why are you yelling you at me? Wanted to follow up. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Are, you, are you yelling at me now? Hold on, I got a, I got an important question. Stacy, did you say at the end of the meeting, Colin, are you going to be available, or did you say Carl? I said, I, I said Carl only because I okay, wanted to go. bring up yeah. well, the, my, like my that, intention. That indicated to me that you wanted to actually hear about my situation and what I had wanted to okay. do. And that like I said, I'm sorry. Natural assumption to make, as Colin just said, but it may no. have been a natural assumption, which is why I apologize for the misunderstanding. What it was, not an assumption, is that you were there and I was going to bring up an example. And because you had been witness to what I wanted to talk about, 
I wanted to hear your feedback, but I understood and I saw you were upset, so I backed away. But now, since I was just asked by Barry if what I wanted was addressed, I'm being very straightforward. I'm saying not really, but that's okay. But I do feel that I didn't need, I didn't deserve to be yelled at, and you just did it again, and I don't understand oh, why. When I, I, when I get passionate about something, my voice raises. That's something okay. I do try to control. But you know, I mean, as I said, you try harder. You said, you said, Carl. I said I needed like a five minute break. And I come back and it's you and it's you and it's Kyle, her husband, her husband, continuing a, de a devolving situation that needed to be taken offline. Now, if I, no, if, if maybe I you know think that's what you wanted, I, would I agree. Offline. Now. Now offline. You know. but, let me, but now I'm going <laughs> to make my point. This, I don't think it should have been taken offline because I was bringing an example of what happens a lot and we don't I always didn't have know that. I didn't know that. As I, I, I just explained you know, the situation you know. to me, and then it was like, I thought after being completely disrespected last year that you wanted to actually hear what I had to say. And then I come in and it's you and Colin continuing the conversation. And maybe you said that when I wasn't there, but as I, and as I said, that's your, I mean, you're the one who's not this, you're the one who's disrespecting what my situation was. Carl, Carl can I try something here? All right. What happened, as I recall it, was you said you had to go away for about five minutes. In that five minutes, there was some discussion that was intended to make that five minutes productive, as opposed to just waiting for right. you in silence for five That's minutes. That's what I just said. So you when know, he came I, back I to that, back and I thought it was still going. Okay. Now I think people did wrap up on that and did give you a chance to speak. Okay. So I'm with Stacy. You know, the heat that you generate doesn't invite her or others who you know, may want to collaborate with you, it's not a very inviting attitude to take to scream at someone who might actually be very open to hearing your positions and your thoughts. I, I, I accept that completely. But as I, as I said, I had one thing I had wanted to say, I would have been off the call in five minutes if I could have just said, here's some links, let's talk about it. And I think and that would have happened had you not just said, hey, but I got to get back in five minutes. Yet again. And as I said, I didn't know what happened. I said, you know, it's like you have a two hour meeting. I was like, I needed a short break. And then I came back thinking we were going to eventually talk about what I wanted to talk about. And then it, you know, it, you, I don't know if it had resolved. And I eventually it did happen. I finally got a chance to ask you <laughs> what, what was your issue? <laughs> Because I didn't know what it was. If you, had, if you had attended last year, you would understand why I'm upset. Well, I'm you... going to go back and watch the video, but I wasn't present in that session um, that Sam gave us the link to. Okay. Well, I'm, I do apologize. They, I didn't, you know, as I said, that was, you said, can you join us? And that was my, that's how I interpreted it was that you, people wanted to talk about what I, uh, what I had wanted to do last year. And as I said, I've been trying to do it for 12 years. So I, I apologize, but I had, you know, I mean, there was like 12 years of frustration in yeah. what just, in what just happened. So. Yeah. I have one of the photos books. So I might have to look to see if it, if it's in there and I missed it or whatever. Yeah, so as I said, you know, I'll have, um, I got to go visit my dad. He's um, in a rehab center. He had broken his leg oh. and stuff. So, okay. Well, as I said, I apologize, Stacey. So, and uh, whatever, you know, as I said, I'll drop off now and, and uh, have some meetings over the next few weeks. May I say one more thing, Carl? As I recall, I mean, I may be incorrect on this, but when you were invited to give the talk at GCC Barn Raising, usually I present it as bring a topic and bring moderation. That's usually what I invite people to do because we were experimenting with different moderation styles. Yeah. So I believe that my request would have been to bring the topic and bring your moderation. I was just wanting to say that's usually my request. I'll go back and, you know, it's probably good to review those meetings before your presentation just to see whether that invitation was actually couched 
that way. Did you just but hear that? Was the request. That, what? I started out the thing wanting to show that, show that video. We started to show it, and then Heiner and stuff said, "Oh, people hate the color." Red. That the color. I mean, as I said, then it, the whole thing got derailed. I was trying to, I was trying to facilitate using a method that got completely shot down before people even looked at so it. So, if you were actually a certified Six Hats moderator. How would you have handled Heiner? I, <laughs> I don't know, because I'm not a, that was my first experience. And I was actually just wanted to bring up the topic about, you know, let's try this process out as, you know, and I, I was, that was just really introducing a topic and, yeah. and things. So, and I had said, I'm not really right, unless people are going to, you know, look at stuff or read, you know, an article and stuff. I mean, it needed to be done. So yeah, I should have just not even tried. It's a bootstrapping problem. You wanted to introduce moderation, but we nobody had learned it yet, so you couldn't exemplify it while introducing it. That's it's I a bootstrapping problem. I was trying to introduce it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Without, without I having want to, I want to let Stacy um, continue with whatever she wanted to talk about. So. Okay, so Stacey, the floor is yours if you want it. What? Did you say my name? I think she's talking to I would have no, loved did you to say my name. I'm sorry. Yeah, I said the floor is yours if you want it. Yeah, I was just saying uh, you know. I was just saying, you know, the yeah, um I I see the rest of the meeting to you since you and stuff. So. Yeah. Carl's about to drop off. He said, Yeah, that's okay. Let him do it. Good luck with your father. Okay. <laughs> um, Sam, come back, please. <laughs> wow. So I just want to say <laughs> I am really tired with people thinking that their frustration gives them the right to be abusive towards other people. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, I was sitting here and I was like, if I reflected what was happening to me inside, I would have been crying. Yeah. And it bothers me that I held it back. I was really thinking, I should just fucking cry yeah. because people need to understand yeah. that they can't just explode and then say, oh, I didn't really mean it. And I do have compassion for how he felt, which is why I backed off. But it's just not OK. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. And Sam, I appreciate you. I feel like you stepped in and that made it that made it better for me. But um, I understand all the problems we have. I asked for this meeting. I only invited him because he was also there. I didn't say, let's have a call about Carl. I thought that had already been decided that it would be at another time, possibly next Sunday. I wanted to address what I see is why we need facilitation in the first place. Not that we don't, but what about when we don't have facilitation? Let's look at those problems as they arise and how do we stop that? Yeah. And it wasn't, I knew before this call that it wouldn't be easy for me to say what was on my mind. And that was stressful enough, but I really believe it needs to be said. Yeah. Um, so that's all I'm gonna say for now, but. I agree, I, I, wish, I wish we had mastered facilitation back in January when you, Stacey, and you, Sam, have proposed a facilitation between me and Colin that night, that, that night in January when neither of you could stick around. And, and I stupidly stayed connected to Colin until 2.30 in the morning with no facilitator present. That was where facilitation really was necessary. And boy, I tell you, I, I would have loved to have had a facilitated session there. Let me be very explicit, OK? okay. Look. All of us have been in business for decades, okay? 
I've run lots of meetings, probably thousands, if not tens of thousands of meetings. I know how to run meetings. My actual relatively hands-off moderation style and GCC barn raising is because I am inviting people to see what happens without moderation. Oh yeah. I and make some agreements around it. And yeah. that's a subtle point that I think escapes a lot of people, especially if they're new. Yeah. Now, if we see repeating patterns of either blow-ups or derailing or whatever other, let's say, non-productive behavior we see, I'm hoping that we as a community say, hmm, maybe we want to do something about that. Now, I believe I've done that with focus. I believe we've had that general consensus around focus, okay? However, there's not been much else. There's been some movement, Brownian motion style towards agreements, but even that gets blocked at times, okay? So focus, I think, is relatively safe. Agreements is not quite so safe, but it's getting there, but almost nothing else. And I'm waiting for these things to bubble up in appreciation so that we can then say, yes, it makes sense that we want focus and here's how we do it. It makes sense that we want agreements and here's how we do it. It makes sense that we want civil behavior and here's how we do it. It makes sense that we have follow-up with action items and accountability and here's how we do it. I would want that to evolve. But over four years, only one and a half of those items has. It's really difficult. Yeah, I've never stuck around this long with any other group to try and see if this would happen. Because usually what happens is somebody says, fuck it, I'm frustrated. Here's the way it's going to work. I'm going to impose Robert's Rules of Order, or I'm going to impose adhocracy, or I'm going to improve sociocracy, or I'm going to improve holacracy, or I'm going to improve teal, or I'm going to do the blah, 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 blah. And somebody just fucking just says, this is what's going to happen. It never is an emergent process where all of us, in some sense, come up with that general agreement. Somebody eventually gets too frustrated and says, this is the way it's going to be. Leave everything at the door. I'm quoting Doug now, okay? However, I've been really, really, really biting my tongue myself because I've been tempted to say, well, here's how it's going to work. But I've really tried to resist that. So as an experiment, people come, bounce in, bounce out, say, this is chaos. Okay, you Trisha. said it, Barry. Colin has said it. Heiner has said it. Jess Winder has said it. Joel probably has said it. Many people have said it. But I myself personally didn't want to be that person that imposes that structure on all of us unless we actually have rational discourse with enough participation and time to actually get that sense that everybody wants this. Yeah. This is a probably the central uh, problem under collective intelligence. Mm. People get damn frustrated because it's not going the way they want it to go. So I could do that. I've chosen not to do that. Stacy, you raised your hand. Yeah, because so I agree with everything Sam said and the pattern that I see that I'm trying to address, which can't be done on a Trello board, is that a large majority of the time when a conversation's being derailed, it's in response to somebody having taken something personally and feeling that they need to defend their actions. And that's what I'm trying, that's why I come here. And the reason I think there's a chance here is because there is a level of trust here. We genuinely do like each other our values in terms of wanting to do good in the world are aligned. And there is overall, you know, if you put the whole group together, in my opinion, there is a higher level of awareness. That's just my opinion, which I have a right to make because I'm the one making a decision if I want to be here. There would be another group where I would not spend my time. It would be a total waste. I haven't given up here. That being said, it's hard for a reason. And in the call that we just had before this, people were recognizing, you know, like even Sam put in the, um, in the chat, you know, we're giving our power away to celebrities or however it is he worded it. 
What I'm trying to say is it's even harder to do it with people in our own group. Yeah. And it's hard to call somebody in our own group out on their own hypocrisy. Yep. And I was kind of moved to do that, which is why I wanted this call. And it didn't go in that direction. And that's fine. Under the best, under the best circumstances, it would have been difficult to do. But it kind of needs to be done. But I'm just, it, it, it gets hard to feel like you're the, you know, I, I don't want to be the bad guy. <laughs> Nobody wants to be the bad guy. Yeah. I would have loved. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Go ahead, Sam. I'm just reacting to your last two words there, Stacey. Is the bad that, guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's unfortunate that you had to say that. And I understand why you say that because most people don't take that candid feedback as an act of love. Right. See, people right. don't understand that, hey, if I care enough about you to give you some positive feedback, which you could internalize, you could use to reflect on, and if you choose to, alter some aspect of your thinking slash behavior, that is an act of love if it's presented that way. Unfortunately, it's not usually taken that way. It's taken right. as criticism, it's taken as you're not as good as, you're not you know, meeting some kind of standard, it's taken as I know better than you, all of those negative perspectives. And that's really unfortunate. And it's, look, I'll take, I mean, it is hard to hear something about yourself that you didn't notice or you're not that proud of. That it, it is hard. We live, in a, we live in a society that makes that difficult. Yes, that's why I say it's unfortunate. It is, but it's also true. Like I, I kept saying to Colin, I, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm not. But at the same time, I see similar things happening repeatedly. Yes. And I don't really see any awareness yes. that what you speak against is exactly what you're doing right. in general. You know, we tend to Hypocrisy. see it's wrong when somebody else is doing it, but we don't see it wrong. Yeah. We don't notice it when we're doing it. Exactly, exactly. So I might actually then go back and reflect on why, at least when I present COI practices, it's with two people you trust and who love you or me. See, for me to actually, the general me, okay, to get that kind of feedback and treat it positively, I need to trust those people that are giving me that feedback. And I need to know that they're actually doing this because they love me and want me to be a better person. If I don't have both of those, I'm gonna just say, you know, fuck you, okay? That's a typical response. Why do I need to take that feedback, right? That's a typical response. Who are you to be giving me some advice? This is why the COI was really, you know, written succinctly to say at least two people you trust and who love you. And just to point out, there's two scales of trust. So the one is that you trust that they love you and that they're saying it in your best interest. But the other scale of trust, which is what I kind of wanted to kind of express to Colin in a sense. How do I heard you on that, that one? <laughs> that was the I main interrupted you, but I did. <laughs> well, you're not saying if you agree or disagree with me, but no, my do. point. Okay, good. Thank you. And, and that's what I kind of wanted to have a conversation in a gentle way about. Right. Go ahead. Uh, so let me just finish the one sentence because okay. we know what we mean. But if anybody's watching this, I want to make sure they know. So the other scale of trust is that you actually believe that they have the ability and the judgment to render a really valuable opinion that you should then think about. Right, right. right. See, the way I would, uh, the reason I say I do understand you, Stacey, is because I do say this a lot. Okay, trust. Most people think of as a three-part statement, I trust you, okay? To me, that means absolutely nothing, okay? It means something only if there's a fourth element. I trust you to bring me eggs, or I trust you to bring me coffee, or I trust you to hold the secret, or I trust you to save me if I'm, you know, committing suicide, right? It's, it's a number of different things about trust, but it's not just I trust you blanket, 
that means almost nothing. Okay. Correct. I trust my daughter to make breakfast. Okay. I trust her to take care of my dogs. I don't trust her to pay the mortgage. I know she can't. Okay. It would be stupid for me to trust her to pay the mortgage. So if you have unjustified trust in someone, okay, to do something, and then you blame them for not doing something like, hey, you know, Ronnie, how come you didn't pay the mortgage this month, right? That's on me. That's not on her. And yet so much of this notion of trust is on the person that betrayed me. But no, you misplaced that trust initially. That should be on you. That should be on me if I expected her to pay that mortgage. And so much of trust does not reflect on the person doing the trusting. It's so much taken as a negative on the person who was trusted. This is a and reversal so that really needs to be reversed. And it, sorry, it really needs to be explicated, in my opinion. Explicated? I don't know what Made that means. Explicit. Really okay, called out. Reveal, because, explain. Okay. Be, yeah, because sometimes, I mean, so for me, it's always, do I trust this person to tell me the truth? That's for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, and then under, you know, the circumstances might change, but, you know, trust is also on a scale. I, I don't think I will ever trust another human being 100%. That'd be foolish. Right. That would be. Because neither you nor that person control all the parameters around any situation. And we don't know until we're in the situation, what we would right. do. That's right. But I, I trust a lot of people, a lot, like 95% in terms of telling the truth. I should say that I appreciated Carl's suggestion that we have to address the shortfall of mediation. And well, I was a little bit disappointed because maybe it wasn't explicit enough, but I was hoping that somebody would mediate the conflict between me and Dave Snowden. And, Essentially, nobody thought that mediation was a useful thing for them to step up to do. Who would take it upon themselves to do that? Uh, probably a fool. <laughs> How many fools are there? Uh, well, this one. <laughs> I had, so, and this is, yeah, I was, I'm not going to mention any names, but if Colin was here, I was going to tell him about an example where he saw somebody do something not appropriate. Well, the throw, there, there was a person that other people out of a group without any kind of due process. And at that time I did speak up and I wasn't the only one. I didn't get blocked, but other people got blocked for speaking up. And Colin still follows that person and reveres that person and other people do as well, but none of those people spoke up and they would have had more clout to speak up because they were, they had more influence. Yeah. So we need people of influence to speak up also. I mean, that's what Sam, you just did that for me today. That was an example when you came on and you said, well, whatever. If I recall correctly the incident you described, okay, then I believe I also did speak up multiple times and wanted to drive that issue to conclusion before I took unilateral action. Yeah, I don't know if we're talking about the same thing. Okay. Um, this, yeah, I don't think it's the same thing. Maybe not. So we could talk if, offline. Sam, if, if it's really the case that one would be a fool to step up to play the role of a mediator, then I'm not sure how we're going to arrive at any outcome when Carl proposes that we learn to become mediators. Because if it's really the case that one is a fool to become a mediator, then there's sort of an inherent... Uh, yeah. Am I yeah, misreading? I, I don't think that's the necessary logical conclusion. There are many transactions where two parties request a third party to be impartial. Escrow yeah. is one, right? Notarization is another, okay? There's a number of these things. So if two parties like you and Dave both say, hmm, we could benefit from a mediator, then I would think it would make sense for someone to you know, be invited and possibly accept that role. But short of being invited, 
that's not something anybody really wants to step into. Yeah, the question is who would in, who could you invite who would be comfortable playing that role? And the answer is nobody I can think of, nobody you can think of. If they're invited, it's different. I mean, I've yes. played this role in different Facebook groups and it, it sucks. <laughs> it really does because what happens is when you are in the middle, you don't have any strong supporters on either side because you pissed everybody right. off by being in the middle. Yeah, it's futile or but, potentially I mean, futile. Again, I can do it in a Facebook group, big deal. What, what's going to happen? They're not going to like me? Oh, well. Right. Um, go but, ahead. Well, maybe, maybe it is a futile uh, um, exercise to try to mediate. I, I, I thought that one was mediatable, but maybe I'm just a damn fool and it can't be mediated. I think every situation is mediatable, short of the East-West conflict, sorry, Middle East conflict. Like, I'm short of that, I think like everything you, else. Like you mediated. said, both parties have to want that yes. mediator. And if they don't, it can't work. And right. I don't think, I think anybody would be a fool to try, which is why I didn't stay on the call with you and Colin that day. So you, because so it was it, useless. let me understand, in proposing, to play a role of a mediator, he decided at the last minute, no, this is not going to work. I don't want to mediate. After, after I saw that, at least in my, after I saw that both people weren't going to follow my rules of mediation, it wasn't worth it because it was. I, wish I had it known just, that. I wish I had known that. And I would have ended it right away. Well, you should have. <laughs> yeah, but I was a damn fool. I, 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 I thought that, you know, we could resolve it. And boy, was I wrong. <laughs> And I have to share, though, both you and Colin said the same thing to me in terms of why didn't you end it earlier? You were trying to be polite. Yeah, I <laughs> Which I to, found let me tell you something. Listening to somebody for seven and a half hours is way, way beyond my ability. I'm getting to the point that it's if I, if I already have something built up, like I haven't left everything at the door, as Doug suggests. <laughs> Five minutes can be way beyond my ability. That's about my limit. What's my father's limit? Five minutes. I can go maybe 15. And after that, it's just washing over. Yeah. But anyway, I so I just that's why I wanted this call, because I kind of wanted, you know, there, there's a place for all of us. But the other people in the room have to want to hear what we're saying. And if somebody doesn't want to hear what I'm saying, why do I keep wanting to scream it at them? They're not interested. I'll be quiet. And like you I ignore said, one person, though, if all the others are interested in hearing. Absolutely. Because, uh, yes. So absolutely. don't let one person's refusal, just because it's loud, represent the entire group. That's true. What, what I'm really speaking to is when one person is repeatedly derailing a conversation in the same way for the same reason and yeah. commenting on everything that maybe that's not at least where I trust them on, but it's not just me. When I'm looking at the other faces, I see the same thing. I, you know, um, that's why I put in the comments before we say something, not in this one, in the, in the first, the other call, I said, when we say something, before we say something, we should ask ourselves, why are we saying it? After we know why we're saying it, then we can because decide. Because I have to talk. Say, say again, Sam, I missed it. <laughs> because, because I have, I have to, talk. to talk. Because I have to talk, yeah. <laughs> and that's I have to the hear thing. the sound of my own voice. <laughs> and that's a smart people problem that really, I think, needs to be. It's a dumb people a problem. problem. I agree with Sam. It's a dumb people problem. <laughs> It, it's a it's a it's a prob it's a problem that smart people have it's a people when they're problem. outside is showing. <laughs> but again, it's like we have to address it, and it's a hard thing to do yes. because you know it's insulting to people. People get offended by yeah. it. Yeah. But you know, go ahead, Sam. And this is why we talk about it here and Saturday, primarily Saturday. Okay. Because if you talk about global challenges, people are all over the globe. Yeah. This problem is everywhere. Yes. Yes. If we and solve that, this problem, imagine what would happen to all the other problems. Can't solve exactly. it. Exactly. You're not going to solve it globally. This but is that's why we have to solve it locally. Yes. 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 Okay? Think global.
they solve problems. That's why the COI is all about personal practices. It's not about what I want you to do. It's not about my great idea. It's not about my great, you know, art that I want to build. It's about personal practices. And if we can actually just get into interactions like this differently, because so, we're growing up or learning or more aware or more conscious or more empathic or more able to model other people's thinking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That would change the world. Not because I got you know the latest greatest you know technology. Well, that so, will also. But. So, so should I just walk away from Dave Snowden and consider him not worth having trying to have a conversation with? I just walk away. Is that my That's best up practice? To you. I don't know Dave real well. It's up to you though. Yeah, well, I don't know him real well either. I only knew that he was collaborating with Nora on the warm data and sense making project. But whatever you do, Barry, I will say, people will notice. If you engage, people will see it. If you don't engage, if you disengage, people will also see that. Okay, I get that part, but then what do I make of that? Exactly. That's I don't know what to make of it. This is how you get to create the future, Barry. Before this point gets lost, can I, I just wanna to add to what Sam was saying before, because this is important. That's why I rejected when, when Carl said that me and Colin should take this offline, I totally disagree for what you said, we need to have it recorded. We need to be able to watch it and think about it and talk about it. Exactly. And, yeah, exactly. And the other thing I wanted to say is, so COI, Community of Impact, which I don't really know too much about, but my question would be, why don't we have a Zoom call that's just for that, like designated for that? Because that's where somebody like me should be. I don't need to be frustrating people with, like Colin or other people. I don't need to be frustrating them because I'm trying to do something that doesn't on a Trello board. Put me in a COI room. Let me let me talk to those people. That doesn't mean we still can't all to get together on Sunday for unblocking and be friends, but we all do not belong in the same conversation. Yeah, I agree with that. That's Although I, I, say. I would say I like the door to be open so that every the right to listen in yes but that's that, also why i said to carl maybe he would want to do a fishbowl thing where he picks the people he wants to demonstrate because then you could weed out the people that you know are going to lead you know they're going to derail it but you don't kick them out but you just don't give them speaking privileges that's the podcast model we have two or three people on a panel or four people on a panel they do a one-hour podcast they publish it maybe they allow comments in the youtube maybe they turn off comments, but the actual conversation is a panel, it's recorded. Yeah, but I do like the interaction that we have on the Zoom calls. I think, I mean, there's a level of intimacy that I think is important to building society. Yeah. Also, I mean, we'd no. like to be able to ask questions. Sorry, Sam, go ahead. Sorry. I interrupted you, but I, I was just gonna say, okay. <laughs> go ahead, you. I just thought that in these panels, it would be nice to be able to put a question into the question queue so they could address the question in the panel. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Yeah. And if they don't address the question, that's an important response. It, yes. When I asked ARPCOM, was that due process, they expressly declined to answer the question. Yep. That was an important answer. Yep. We're not gonna we're not gonna touch that question. That's why I love having these sessions recorded because yeah. only then can you really note this kind of behavior. Yeah. Okay. People's yeah. extractions in notes are the way they see things. Okay. But the actual quote unquote real event is not captured in you know handwritten notes. It's only yeah. captured by, let's say, video like this. Okay. Right. Where people can then go back and say, geez, you know, the, Somebody interrupt Stacy 17 times in a row, even though they were being notified that they were interrupting Stacy. What is that all about? Yeah, that's warm data. That's a lot of warm data. All data is warm data. <laughs> well, the stuff that I was talking about was literally 14 years old. So I don't still warm. <laughs> all data is warm data. All right, I'll accept that definition. The last I thing I want to say was notice what happens when three people get together. It's, it's a very much, different dynamic in three versus four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or more. Okay. 
I still think threes are the most enjoyable uh, interaction. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. Although I have to say, I've been in calls with six or even nine people where it just flowed beautifully. It can work. I'm it just can. Saying, I'm just saying something structurally different happens in threes. And yeah. the stuff that happens in larger numbers, you know, usually requires more alignment, and more understanding of protocols and practices. Yeah. You well, can't just get random people together in groups of nine and really expect this kind of interaction. No. But this was also, this was a very interesting call because of the, the way the emotions, <laughs> they just were like all that over the That startled the hell out of me. I had no <laughs> idea that much anger going back. But you've done that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but yeah, but you've always asked me, am I? You acting? went to fourteen, yeah. Barry. <laughs> Stacy figured it out. Nice. Right? That was on purpose. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's not no. more. I, I think, did I say five or? I can't Don't be remember. so proud of it, Barry. <laughs> I was acting, and Stacy knew I was acting. But you also weren't hurting anybody. Like I don't think anybody was being hurt. Uh, I well, that was not my certainly my not my intention. Right. And if you could have made, if you felt you could have made your point by coming in with less intensity, I think you would have. Yeah. Maybe if I went to 11, it's, actually, I didn't really go to 11. I really went to like 12 or something. I was exaggerating. When I, 11 is like something like 12 dB. I can't go that high. <laughs> well, you know, what? it's like I said on the other call when I brought up Chef Ramsay, somebody could be frustrated. Maybe his whole shipment didn't come through and all these horrible, you know, we don't know he employs so many people, what's on his shoulders, blah, blah, blah. That still doesn't give him a right to demean and belittle and hurt other people who often try to hold it in. Yeah, and I didn't, I mean, I was, I felt belittled from Dave and I held it in. Maybe that was a mistake. So it gives Ramsey the right? Ratings. What is it? Ratings. Ratings. Well, but that's Different where ratings. I was. But that's where I was saying that that's our fault. Yes, because, absolutely. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. And we I, do it to ourselves. You know, we have what we created. We have what we asked for. We asked to, you know, worship celebrities like Kardashians. This is what we get. We get them instead of Carl Sagan. We yeah. get what we asked for. Yeah. Because we're stupid. And fools. <laughs> Yeah. I don't I don't think it's that we're stupid or fools, but for some reason and we've hit on it, it is very difficult for us to see our own behavior in a way. Want to call it stupidity. Say it again. It's because we don't want to call it stupidity. It is stupid, but we don't want to call it that. I I had maybe, no, maybe. I had no idea that if I asked ARBCOM was that due process, that, that would have been off-putting to them. Never occurred to me that that would be off-putting to them. Until after I found out why it was all putting. <laughs> then we don't want to answer that question. Don't ask us why. <laughs> I think some people would have thought that that would have been off putting. Well, Sam Korn, who was a former ARMCOM member. Anyway, Stacey, we've interrupted you a lot. Sorry. But I just want to say one thing. I think it's important that we, instead of saying it's stupidity, it's a lack of awareness. Yeah. And, I, and I don't think we should judge that lack of awareness as harshly as we do. Although um, when we're purposely, well, because this goes to the whole, for example, I think Colin has a lack of awareness and I was just attempting or I wanted to attempt to bring some of that awareness in. And yes, as the person, there are many of us that that's really hard for us because there's like an embarrassment or I'll speak for myself. Sometimes when, when I see something in myself because somebody's brought it to my attention and it's something that I may not be very proud of because I know that I wouldn't like it in somebody else and now I'm saying oh shoot I was doing that it it causes a lot of things to churn up and most people and this is where I am different because I really worked hard to exercise this and not do it to make themselves feel more comfortable they rather just push it back not enough of us have gained that ability to be able to take it and say, that's okay. And I'm human. And I, you know, I didn't mean anything bad by it. And I'm still lovable and all those other, you know, warm, warm squishy words. Um, and that's why it depends who's giving you the message. 
And unfortunately, when we hold in at what we have to say for so long, by the time we get it out, it usually has such a force behind it that it does hurt the other person because yeah. it's not just the point, it's all your baggage along with the point. Yeah, because it's been building up over time. Yeah. Right. That, and I have to just say in my dream, you know, if you have like this dream of what, what I realized the perfect situation for me to be, for me to have is to be invited to speak to the most obnoxious people <laughs> <laughs> and be able to tell them what I think about them on the air. Like I would love to be able to like sit across from Donald Trump in an interview and just be very civil with him, but to, or Chef Ramsey. Not, I'm not saying anything bad about them, but I would love to, the people I would most like to call on their own shit are the people that other people aren't gonna really feel bad for them. <laughs> other people are gonna say, wow, it's about time somebody said this. Yeah. But you don't wanna do that to like the underdog because they're the low hanging fruit. Sam's hand is up, but he's... Yeah. <clears throat> I would like to um, answer your question about whether it really is stupidity. Yeah, I think this is a difference between, you know, not knowing or not being aware of something versus knowing and being aware and still choosing. Yeah. Okay. This is stupidity. The other is ignorance or unawareness. And yeah. there is a difference. Yeah, it's a conscious agree. choice. If it's an intention, well, I think not that's look what at awareness. Is. You know, to not be aware, to not be uh, acknowledging fact, to not be um, sensitive to other people's uh, input. Yeah, I would say that's that's about as good a definition of stupidity as I could think of. So I will say it is appropriate to use the word stupid in this example. I don't know, because I don't know that the person acting stupid is really getting it. Like, I, I think that what's happening is that their ego or whatever, it's hard to look at themselves and say, oh, you're right. I was looking for a fight there. It's a hard thing to do. And... I don't know that it's stupidity, but maybe a fear. There's like there's like a, a core fear in there of, yeah. There's you know I'll I'll be attacked for having done the wrong thing, or yeah yeah. I don't I don't want to you know. The, I, I will make one generalization. Those of us that were really criticized as children and felt made and sensitive people that learned to put shells on, it's really difficult for them, especially when they're male. I think it's easier for females, but especially when they're male, it's really hard to break those shields because it's protecting them from all this pain of feeling. feeling inadequate, insecure? Not even that, like, so, okay, so when I came on and I told you guys how, how bruised I felt inside over today's interaction, mm -hmm. that took courage to say that, to admit that. That was not easy, that was not easy to say, but I feel comfortable with both of you and I don't deal with the audience because they'll think whatever they're gonna think, but, now for a man to do that and to choke up, that would be harder on him. He's going to face, it, it's, you know, I can get away with the fact, oh, she's a, she's a sensitive woman. It's harder in our society for a man or even a woman in business. Women in business have to take on that male persona. Yeah. And yeah, there are people rebelling against that now and that's good and you know, there are men that are working to change that system as well, but we're all socialized by it. Trick is how to be a rebel and get away with it. Sam. So <clears throat> I was just about to say something 
at the moment that you disclosed how you felt bruised by that previous conversation. I was about to say, Stacy, I really appreciate you staying here and really <laughs> still being part of this conversation. You are not safe in many interactions here, and yet you still show up. Many people who get the kind of treatment you get and others may have also, don't come back. Yeah. And that's why I really appreciate you being here. Thank you. I really do. Yeah, attrition. It's and it's not of just because you're tough, it's because you represent a set of thoughts, a, a, a mindset that I think, you know, I really align with. And I think you and I have had that conversation before. And I would like to see, you know, shared more widely. And it's an understanding of what we're doing here, which also is uncommon. Yeah. Knowing when to stick out, when I appreciate away. you being here. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. And when you say how do I think Barry just said how do we make it I forgot how you worded well, it how but can you be a rebel and get away with it I think we have to cultivate a society where it's okay yeah. to to do that and that I think it's know, in the arts I think you have to move out of academia and into the arts to be a rebel in a socially acceptable way and you have to disguise it all in terms of artistic presentations. Yeah, I, I don't know that I agree with that because like I really appreciate what Sam just said to me and that's and because we're not in the arts right now but I've made a conscious choice. I know that it's important to say what I say. I know that I'm probably going to get smacked but I can't help it. That's my role. Like I really do believe that that's right. I, I've made a conscious decision to speak my truth. Right. I think Stay. you would feel better about speaking your truth and getting smacked than not speaking your truth and feeling like you've betrayed yourself in that thought. Yeah. yeah. Well, I feel even better when I hear people like you say it's appreciated. You know, there are other places where I won't, but I'll go, and that's when I'll do what Barry says, where I'll go and I'll write about it. So I can at least share the experience with other people that it might help because they felt that way too. Right. But in terms of where I actually spend my time and interact, we talked about like the qual. I look for the trust thing and that people are coming from a place of love. And there are certain groups that I don't go in because there are two, not that if there's one person that's not good, but if there's too many people that are willing to exert power over, I don't want to waste my time because it's not worth it. It's not worth the pain. <laughs> Too many assholes. <laughs> I mean, I even know more recent examples. It, it doesn't go unnoticed, for example, that Tyra was here for a while and then it no longer is here frequently. Which one? There's two, Tyra and Tyra. Which one? I'm talking about he Tyra. He means Burning Bee. He means Burning Bee. Burning Bee. Okay, yeah, she has been absent for a couple of months. Yeah. And then I also know that um, there's another person who feels very strongly about being heard, who came briefly and doesn't come very often anymore. That's Baby. And she even hasn't been that, here since I've been here. Yeah, I've never, I've never been in a call. I, I, was started, in a call. I started a year ago, and she already was gone. Yeah, yeah. and even before that, Tammy. But she Tammy was gone before I was here. You know? A lot of people. Yeah, so in light of all that, we have to examine what happens here and why people get pushed away. And if we here don't see the behavior that does push people away, we're our own damn fault. Yeah, I, I'll certainly agree with that. I'd like to know what the cause of attrition is. We don't do exit interviews. <laughs> At least I don't think we do. Do we, we do exit should... interviews? There's nothing to exit from. <laughs> no, I, no, 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 but, but he's got a good point. Like you just I know, mentioned. I know, I know, people. I know, but I'm making and, another point. And I could say they're, that they're not, they didn't all disappear for the same reasons. That's why you need to do an exit interview. You can't just guess. But, I mean, there might, there's similarity. Well, paid enough. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name and of the pain? <laughs> anyway, this was good. This was, this was good. And, uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I really, you know, the whole community of impact, which again, I, I know what it means, but I wonder if that shouldn't be like a total track of calls that are related to that. That's where we could look at, like, so for example, when Barry was talking, when he said, I want to go back to that six hats call, I wouldn't, if my purpose was to learn what the six hats were, I would not watch that call. That if, my, <laughs> if my purpose was to locate where things go off the rail from, from their origin, then I would watch the call. But that's a different conversation for different people. And yeah. frankly, there are certain people I don't care what their opinions are about, <laughs> about because I don't like I just I don't want to hear it because it doesn't mean anything for me. It's 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 not going to help me. Not a source of reliable or useful information. No. And I don't think we should keep pretending to be polite over that. You know, politeness, I, I want to be polite, but there comes a point where it's just enabling behavior. Yes. Yeah, I yes. agree. Yeah. Yes. How to be diplomatic, how to tell somebody how to go to hell in a way that they're looking forward to the trip. Well, well you know, and, yeah. and this, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was, I was going to say there really does need to be levels of mastery to actually be able to contribute verbally. <laughs> well, but, but this is also what I think should happen in, in, in larger systems. That's right. Like a judge should not be able to be a judge unless they pass a certain test. Yeah, like not raping people. Yeah. Not and raping also people being the plaintiff like, and the prosecutor and the jury at the same time. <laughs> well, and being able to, you know, I mean, and that's where things like, uh, I think Carl had put in the chat. I don't know who put it in the chat in the other call. Can we trust someone who's anonymous? And I put yes if there's consistency. I could be talking. Yeah, it's verifiable. To a bot. Well, but what I'm saying is, if I'm talking to a bot and I don't know it, but every time I the bot, the values don't seem to change. My ex, you know, like I'm not surprised by the answers they give me. There's a certain consistency of thought. I have trust in that thought. I mean, I remember watching a, I, I used to watch soap operas, which I learned a lot about people from. Um, but I remember after many years, this character did something so out of character. And I was like, whoa, they had to have changed the writers and they don't know Vicky because Vicky would never do that. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's a problem. You have to know those are long lost twin sister. <laughs> no, it was, uh, I, I don't oh, yeah, even the evil remember. Twin, right, the evil twin right. character. Right. That's a famous trope, throwing the evil twin. <laughs> no, but but this brings it's up a dream. That's another but one. But here, here's another point, and that, I, that I'll just make, it's totally unrelated, but we really have to look at those moments when people are out of character and take a closer look. Yes. Yeah. Not decide one way or another, yeah. but take a closer look, because maybe they're actually revealing something really is their character yeah you don't see character unless you see stress well it's like when you say you know the story about you know you go if you go on a date you look at how your date treats the server yeah because that gives you a better indication of who they are yep. than how they are when they're speaking with you yeah yep. hiding your foibles in your floor. right we solved the problems of the world Okay, I'm good for today. <laughs> if I may, for one more point, uh, Stacy, sure. you made one point about um, oh man, and uh, it's gonna save it for later. You'll think of it as soon as we hang uh, up. I forgot as soon as I said one more thing. <laughs> Just one more thing. I don't know if this will help you remember, but in the in the meanwhile, what I think would be interesting to do is to come to a call like there might be a certain question that I want Barry's opinion on. What would that question be? Certain question that I want Sam's opinion on. What would that question be? It would be interesting to then look at all the questions Barry gets, to look at all the questions Sam gets and whoever. I think that's useful for the person too. I mean, most of us love giving our opinion, 
And I don't want to take that away. I want people to be able to give their opinion, but let them give their opinion in areas that people actually want to hear what they have to say. I want people to ask me what they really want my opinion for. They don't want my opinion. How's your day? Who cares? <laughs> Not who cares, but that's what Jaswinder was always getting to. You know, stop the small talk. What is it you really want to know? Say what you really want to know from that person and then let that person tell you. For the record, I've heard you make this request before and I completely grok it, okay? <laughs> you grok it, not block, is that what you said? You grok it? Not block, I grok, grok. Okay. okay. Sometimes I'm not sure which syllable I got. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wish okay. we had more play time, you know, where we... Well, this is why I want people to visit, okay? So we can actually see the island, go look at the view, go sit out there by the fire pit, cook dinner together, have meals together, you know? Let me tell you, if I didn't have Marley, I'd be there. I'd be there, Massachusetts. I, I might make it, Marley would be coming with me if I go to visit you, Barry, though. By the way- That, uh, that I could drive, though. For the record, I think Kayla's planning on coming back to visit me again in awesome. November. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. I take it that was a fun, a fun gathering. Well, you know, they went primarily to the Olympic Peninsula. They went to Seattle. They went and saw a bunch of stuff, you know, so we only had one meal together. Oh, uh, wow. But I said, next time she comes, you know, she's got to come here and see the island. So she agreed to do that. And it uh, doesn't jinx the, the thing. She's trying to convince Tyra to come also. Well, once you start traveling again, because we were making plans at the time. You know, I was waiting for you to have to be in the Northeast because then I was like, we could all, you know, we could, we could rent out a big place and a few people, if you're only a few hours from yeah. everybody, I would love to do, I mean. Yeah. By the way, my brother lives in Tacoma Park, Maryland. Oh, that's close enough. I could drive yeah. that far. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to go cut my brisket now. <laughs> I got to well, slice it some. in <laughs> Can I send you a styrofoam box and you send me some? <laughs> this, this is the one thing that people really like that I cook. <laughs> this is, I don't cook a lot, but my brisket is something I get uh, okay, requests. My request then is when you visit, I give you right. responsibility for, for preparing brisket one time. I will, that I will do. I will okay. do. If I could use your- I will your not kitchen. forget that, okay? <laughs> I will not forget that. I take my food seriously, okay? Oh, so do I take my food seriously? And I take my food seriously. <laughs> and with um, that, I think I'll go off and find some food. <laughs> goodbye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Fun, guys. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.